last week you released the trailer of the any sticker beta on test flight that's right and i am actually i mean i'm super excited about any stickers of course but i'm almost <laughs> more excited about the trailer you released that was mind blowing how did you do it so yeah there's actually a little secret in that trailer most people were thinking i was doing that in after effects and i think that's the it's profish it looks like professional grade after effect thank you so i think after effects is um the expectancy also like the industry standard most of the time these things are being done in after effects but <laughs> because i love react i actually made the trailer in react what do you mean so that that means i i was like diff and span and like styled components to 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 write the trailer and so i was thinking since a video is just 60 frames i just make each frame in react and then i stitch it together using a little script that i wrote so that video is actually a website and each frame of your video has been rendered on to an html page yes that's that's correct so to to go a bit deeper into this i i made a hook which is called use current frame and what it does it just counts up um every frame and i call that hook i get a number back and then based on that if i i change the animation over time and then i stitch the then i screenshot the frames using puppeteer and wow. stitch it together using ffmpeg and yeah so you can write your videos in react you can program your animations finally well it's been a dream of mine for a long time and so i tried that turns out it's not that hard after all um but of course it's something that mm, it's it's hard to to make something for everything you need to know all the the knobs to turn um and it's really like a framework tailored for myself it has uh, turned out really well and it is actually really suitable i could imagine that a real uh, community backed motion graphic uh, framework for react could be coming out because screenshotting this with puppeteer is working really well and you can do 4k i can do 16k i can do <laughs> any resolution so i unless there's like 8K. some limit on 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 puppeteer it's just going to take a long time to render everything so the render times are not so good <laughs> yet but that's fair i think so of course i could um spawn some node.js web workers and like maybe parallelize it um but i think like to render a to render an hd frame takes about 1 second and what i'm really excited about um is that i can i can use all the i can use all the javascript code that's already out there i can use svg i can use canvas and use all the the ui helpers i can i can use css and one thing that i also used um was the spring animation function from reanimated 2 so i just went to the github and looked um how does this function work and we come back to these parameters mass stamping and i had to rewrite it a bit so that it um does not change a shared value over time but that it just calculates the value for a certain time mm. and now i can use the same bouncy really fluid spring animation for my motion graphics and as far as i can tell after effects doesn't have a way to do spring animation that's the fascinating uh, part because i have no uh, 
experience in motion graphics. So of course, I wish I could program my motion graphics because that's all I know is programming and that's the only paradigm I know. So of course, I want to use this as a solution even for my motion graphic. But the interesting thing is that you have skills in both React and After Effects. And so the fact that you are you decided and you said it has been a dream of yours to to tackle this uh, problem from the perspective of React means that you have real use cases for it because you could do it in After Effects. I mean, you you have the know-how. So it means there is really a class of problems for which uh, it makes sense to use React to achieve these motion graphics. I think there's uh, there are definitely lots of use cases for it. Of course, I am much better at React than I am at motion graphics. So I felt like I want to solve all my problems in React, even my my videos. Um, but as it turns out, there are really some things that you cannot do in After Effects that you can do um, in React. I think one big weakness of After Effects is that it just um, doesn't scale. You You move some things around and then you duplicate it and then you later realize, oh, actually, I want it. It's different. You have to change all the copies manually, or and you cannot. Um, once you have done a step, you can go back, but then you need to undo all the steps that you have also done. So in terms of composability, After Effects just doesn't scale so much. So um, why not write the videos in code? I thought to myself. The composability aspect also has been something I've I've noticed where. You want, for instance, maybe to customize an animation. You know, like for instance, in my videos, I would like the intro to be a little bit different every time. And I also notice that some changes can be actually quite uh, difficult to do where if you have the React mindset, if you think, oh, if this was using a framework as the one you describe, it would be actually pretty easy to do. Yeah, so I think it's since... uh it's uh it's a bit harder to to write all the code and to just like use the mouse to to drag and drop so it will take a it's bit hard longer to use the mouse <laughs> to drag and drop i agree it's completely my so on after effects you can like kind of draw and drag and drop it's the drag and drop mm. that kills me you know i just want to type <laughs> <laughs> what i want to do <laughs> right the so typing is slower but much more scalable so I think if you want a different color for your intro every time or like add some programmatic randomness to it, that's really hard. So um, I already gave you access to my framework. You could try to program it. I would be really interested um, what's coming out of it. 